right under the boat. Got a head shaker here. All right, guys, what we're gonna do today is we just gonna, we try and just different stuff, staying away from the trestle. Again, we're fighting the north wind, so we're staying on the north shore. Started off on Highway 11, caught a couple in there. Nothing enough, nothing enough to really keep my interest. Trying some other spots now. Now, what we're using today is our X shad on our screw lock jig head. And you screw that lure right on there. The X shad's got a belly in the slit and the screw lock really does a good job of holding that lure on. Let's see if we can put some of these silver wonders in the boat. There it is right under the boat. Right under the boat. Good fish, boy, good fish. If you look back a couple episodes ago, we were talking about suction zones. And on that one, we were on the southern part of the lake. Like I said, today we got a north wind. So we're on the north part of the lake. And I got a fallen tide coming out of Lake Pontchartrain going into a major pass. And we're fishing right on that point. Beauty. So the current's pretty swift here. I got the half ounce screw lock hook on. Need to put a fresh X shad on there. This is the our finger mullet one. They're all good. They all represent some type of fin fish. And you just screw it on and it helps really hold it in without going through a lot of lures. We have one that represents just about every fin fish that trout reds and flounder like out here in the Gulf Coast. We got a cockaho that's a good one for the winter. This is the finger mullet, which is good pretty much all the time. Got a croaker one that's very popular. And we got several that look like a shad. I brought some glass minnow ones with us today too. That's one of my favorite ones. Glass minnow is a fantastic forage right here in the Pontchartrain Basin. That's some little minnows that have that silver streak right down the middle of them. And we're just fishing this falling tide. I'm throwing it up in the current, letting it kind of sweep back. And these fish can be anywhere out here, right before this suction zone where it enters some really deep water. So I'm fishing about 12 foot now, and right behind me is some really deep water. There's just no way I could get the bait to the bottom in the deeper part. And there he is. Oh, oh, come on, baby. Got a few fish here. Hey, got a few fish here. There he is. Oh, my goodness. I keep missing him. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. There he is. There he is. Now the keeper. Cheaper to keeper. Cheaper to keeper. Now this particular spot we're fishing right here. This is the last place in Pontchartrain that yielded a star, CCA star winning speckle trout. Back before they closed the Mr. Go completely, you know, this lake could really produce some monsters in the, in the summertime to compete for that star tournament. My friend Dr. Weiss caught one over eight pounds right here. And um, ever since they closed the Mr. Go, we just don't get them big fish like we used to, especially in the summertime when they need salt. But we're way before the summer. 
salt's still not a a must have right now for you know decent sized fish like we're catching but for those big fish those seven eight nine pounders you know 25 to 30 inches you need to have some serious salinity and this lake just does not get it anymore that's why when we do catch some nice fish usually it's in the winter time that's when trout really don't need salt at all but uh oh as i say that i seriously doubt this is a big trout but if it is a trout it's a nice one nicer than anything we had could be foul hook could be a blue cat could be a red oh yep foul hook look a lot of times when a fish if you're on trout and especially not really big ones and then all of a sudden one feels like a big one nine out of ten times it's because he got foul hooked nevertheless another trout though whenever we were fishing highway 11 earlier today there was just boats all over the trestle and I saw a few fish get caught, of course. I mean, the trestle's a great place. But once that word really gets out, and the fish really come into the lake, and the trestle's got them good, that just means the fish came into the lake. And they're not going to just flock to just the trestle. There's so many different suction zones. There's so many different structures, other bridges, reefs we have out here, shorelines. And when that bridge starts getting crowded, I like to just get off of it. It just amazes me that people just don't really try anything else in the, in the lake besides the bridge itself. And it's all, it seems to always been like that. You know, 90% of the fishermen in the lake only fish the trestle. The other 5% maybe will peek at the other bridges. And then the other 5% fish some just oddball stuff like this right here. And you just never know. Like, I checked this spot yesterday and didn't even get a bite. But where I did catch some yesterday had dirty water. So I figured maybe it's clean over here today. Maybe my fish from the dirty water moved here. Who knows? But checked it again, and here they are. That one's a little short. But back when we were, when Dr. Weiss caught that fish that won the star, we were catching 30 pound five fish stringers here regularly. I remember one particular day there was a lot of boats in this spot and it was like five 25 pound five fish trout stringers caught in that morning. I mean, it's just unbelievable. That's how good that this lake used to be on big trout. If you just started fishing this lake and you catch a 22 incher and you think it's a big trout, you sure would have had a good time 10 to 20 years ago. But we still got fish, can't complain. Got more bass now than we ever used to. Red fishing's okay. This one's gonna be close, let me measure him. Oh, uh, you know what? I'll just throw him back. He was borderline. 11 and a quarter to 12 and a quarter. And again, I'm just throwing it up into that current, letting it sweep back. So when I'm fishing with a jig head, I want to throw up into the current and let it dribble back towards the boat. If you look at one of our last episodes, might be the last one, either if it wasn't the last one, the one before that, with me and Captain Chris fishing Carolina rig TKO shrimp on a big incoming tide on the trestle, you'll see that technique, and that would definitely work here. Really works well when you have an anchor or spot lock trolling motor or something like that. That way you can position the boat up current and that bait, that technique really does well lifting that lure against the current. So I don't really, I don't even know if I have any with me. I'm gonna stick with the jig head today. But if I were to fish that Carolina rig and the fish were right here, I would set the boat up there and then fish it out the back of the boat 
with that TKO, just lifting that bait up off the bottom and letting it make contact. And that would be very effective right now. It's the same poncha train pop. Pop, 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 pause, let it settle back in that eight to 15 foot, depending on how close you are to the bank. Now, like I said, if you back this boat up a little more, it canyons the 40 foot real quick. And there's just no way you're getting a bait down in that deep of water. That's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. Shake that head. Shake that head, baby. Shake that head. Oh, missed him at the boat. Missed him at the boat. Tearing up this X shad. Tearing it up. There he is. Boy, there's a lot down there. I mean, I'm setting the hook like a crazy man and missing them. They're really not that small either. Got me in the back of the head. Really not that small, these fish are kind of nice considering how many I'm missing here. Let them fish are in that same little sweet spot. I gotta throw it in a perfect angle and then sweep it. There's a dinker. I gotta sweep it at the exact same approach every time to get bit. So I'm throwing it like a 45. Tide's falling pretty hard. And where my bite is a current is more like the 45 this way once the current sweeps it around. I mean, almost exactly what I just described. That's where that bite came from. I missed him, though. Let's see if we can get him on this cast. So it's like a 45 into the current. And just letting it sweep my line and lure from the front of the boat to the back of the boat while still trying to maintain it getting to the bottom all right well they slowed up on us on the finger mullet this is the glass minnow x shad and the x shad's come in a really nice packaging and a little case here that way you don't want the uh the paint jobs to scuff up on you. So it comes in this little case. This glass mena, this thing's awesome. Let me show it to you. It's got a chrome line right down the middle of it, just like a real glass minnow. This thing really comes to life when you put it on this <clears throat> screw lock head. Let's go ahead and thread it on here. Awesome, awesome color. I mean, look how look how natural that looks. Looks like a real fish. Let's see if we can get them worked up again on this one. Letting it sweep back with that current. Sweep on back, baby. It's a good one to end on. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Dockside TV. Using our lifelike X-Shads. That's the glass minnow. Using some finger mullets. We got croaker. 
shad imitations. We're going to be putting, each box will have a, a different one. We don't have a giant uh, um, surplus of any of these in one particular color, so we're just going to mix it up. And each month's Maithley bait box on some X shads. Make sure you subscribe to the bait box. Get your hands on that. Put them on a screw lock jig head. Come out and get some beautiful specs like this. Fish in other places besides the bridges here in Pontchartrain as we get into the middle to the end of the spring, middle end spring, April, May time. Got a little light cold front that just came through today. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. Subscribe to all of our Dockside TVs as we showcase all kinds of places to fish on the Gulf Coast, Gulf Coast, especially the Pontchartrain Basin, catching these silver wonders like this right here. Till next time, good fishing.